so thank you so much for making some time and um, um, as I have shared with you today, we will just look at um, the, na the nature of the discussion and uh, we'll highlight the work that um, you do as a director of sports, um, but you know, to also map out to your journey um, where you have come from to um, where you are now. So without much ado, I would um, start with, um, if you could share with me a little about yourself, who is um, Martin and what um, your education and your current position probably. Well, thank you, Derek. Thanks so much for the invitation. So nice to see you, see you again. Like um, I said before, like, sorry for my English. I haven't practiced it <laughs> in Korea. And I'm happy to be here, like to share some of my experience in what's going to be like three, four years that since we graduate. But um, to answer your questions, like right now I'm working as a, as a direct director of the in schools of sport of the International University of Ecuador, UID, Universidad Internacional del Ecuador. So uh, I'm a full time director there of sports. And my, well, my previous education, as you know, uh, we graduated as a sport managers, a master's of sport managers in, in Seoul National University. Back then, I had the chance to graduate myself from sports marketing here in Ecuador in Universidad de las Americas, UDLA. And I've been, I've been in, involved in sports like all my life. I started as, a, as an athlete. I, I didn't become like a full professional athlete. Um, and then I became as a coach and because of that, I had the chance to be as a president of the, of the federation of the sport that I was doing, that was yeah. what it key back then. And since then I started to building up my career in sports. So, so yeah, that's like a resume of what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, um, just to run people through who don't really know who Martin is, um, he's the director of sports, just like he said, at the International University of Ecuador. And, um, and just to also let my um, students as well as those who are watching know, um, he also um, he was the also the president of the um, Ecuadorian Water Ski and Water Board Federation. Um, he was also the marketing manager for the Sociedad Deportiva Arcus. Um, that's for the National Division One team. And then also he was the brand manager for Adidas Ice Sports Marketing. And this is from 2014, um, that's in 2014. And the e -com the e-commerce and community manager, Ecuador um, Nature Expeditions, as well as also a coach um, for water ski, uh, that is H2 Osmosis Sports and that is in the United States of America. And that's way back 2006 to 2009. So that at least that, that, that could tell you who Martin is and how hard his work over the years. And uh, many people think um, um, as sports directors, you just get a position, but um, this highlights how far you've come. Anyway, um, just before we move on, I just want to ask if you have any hobby um, besides your normal work? Well, yeah. Well, my work right now is kind of like a hobby because I'm working in, in, in the stuff that I studied. Uh, basically, I tell you that I love sports. Um, I think that I don't practice as much sports as I like. Yeah. I think that's like a karma of sports managers that we don't do as much sport as, as we work on it. But basically, uh, well, my hobbies have been changing a, a little bit in my life. Yeah. Right now, I'm like a full-time hobby. I'm, I'm full-time dedicated for, for e-sports, electronic sports. It has been like a, kind of like escape from the normal world. I'm playing yeah. video games with my friends. I recently opened a channel in Instagram uh, just like for fun, for, for video games, um, like a, a streamer, but just for fun. So that's, yeah. that's kind of, kind of like my basic hobby right now. Yeah, thank you for that. And um, at what point did you know, given your background, that you want to be in the field of sports? 
management and marketing? Well, it's kind of crazy because um, when I decided to have a career, I will, I mean, I was doing sports since I was eight or seven years old, but I was very good at chemistry when I was back in school. So I decided to study environmental engineer, something that has nothing to do with my career. And at some point after my two years of, of studying that uh, career, I decided that that was not the thing for me. I mean, I was, I love sports. I love management. I also was very interested in marketing. So I decided to quit that career. And fortunately, um, in the university that I was studying, they opened a new career that was sport management, sport marketing. They had a, an alliance with the Real Madrid a football club to open this career. So I knew that that was for me for, this, the first moment I saw it. And since I, I started that career in marketing and sport management, it was being aligned with the things that I was doing in sports. I was being the, an athlete that was going around the world for, for, some, for, for some tournaments. I wouldn't say as a professional, but I was trying to compete because there were not many people in my sport. By, back then, I was the only one in my specific discipline. So that helped me a lot to like just going around something from the academic part and the sports part. So it was an easy decision because I, I hadn't to think it as, as much. And I knew what that was something for me. So 100% sure that that was the path I had to take. So um, would you say it was an easy decision uh, given the fact that sometimes you are not sure whether you have a space in this field? Yeah, I mean, it was an easy decision because I was in something that I didn't like, that it was environmental engineer. Um, I took that decision because I was very good at chemistry at school, something that I don't remember anymore. And it was an easy decision because when I saw the sport marketing uh, career, I knew that was for me. It was very interesting. It had something that uh, I really loved. And since the moment I changed through that to, to that career, everything was very easy because that was something that I like. And that's something that I tell everybody that you have to be in stuff and, and places where you like. Otherwise, I don't think you're going to fail, but you're not, be, you're not going to be happy. Yep. And um, um, have there been challenges? I mean, now you are the director, so you'll be working with people, but um, we, we, we usually start with serving other people and then, you know, going through the, rough roads to be where we are. Um, please share some of the challenges, if there is at all, um, in your journey. Well, I think the biggest challenge I had was when I was president of the Ecuadorian Water Ski Federation. It was a job that it, uh, there was no salary. Uh, I don't know how to say in English, but it was like... Um, voluntary, I guess. Yeah, exactly like that. And it was very challenging because it's because of the love of sport. And the main challenge that I was still uh, still very young, I had 22 years old, I was finishing my career and I had to take a position where I have to be in charge of many people that were much older than me. And it's not easy like to be, I wouldn't say the boss, but I would say how to lead people when you're younger than, than them. And with no salary, without a little bit of experience, not, not so much experience, yeah. that was kind of, like, kind of the most challenge, the biggest challenge that I had. Right now that I'm working as a director of, of the school sport of the international university, uh, I, had, I had challenges for sure, but I wouldn't say they were as much as hard when I was so young and in, in the job of the Water Ski Federation. Yeah, so um, you, you transited from being uh, um, an athlete to become the director, of, um, to become the president of the Water Ski Equatorial Federation, Equatorial Water Ski Federation. And if I understand you correctly, then you have to also sacrifice because it's, it's more like a pro bono. You, they, you, you're not being paid for the job. Yeah, well, in any case... Um, um, we can we, let's now look at the, um, the main discussion for today. Probably what um, sports managers or directors of sports do. Um, I remember when I used to work in the university. I usually get that question: What do you do? 
you always dress and then you come to work, you go to the sports department and then you know, what do you do? So um, as the director of sports, what's your responsibility? Is it possible to highlight some of the things you do in a typical day, day work? Yeah, well, I would say that I fully do what a sports managers have to do because sometimes like you can get a job in, in a certain area, a field of sport, and you're not going to be applying everything that sport management has. But in my position, I've been able to apply everything that a sport manager, ma management has, like uh, facility management, like events, like uh, marketing, administration, a little bit of governance, self, um, working with people, with athletes, um, a lot of uh, programming, physical activity, um, mostly everything that management has. So. Basically, my main responsibilities are like uh, I have to be in charge of a uh, we offer uh, more than 10 sports in, in, in my university. So I have to be in charge of the normal daily basis that professors do in each sport that we have, like um, management, uh, managing the, the, the students, uh, the classes, the teaching, the syllabus. I mean, everything that has to do with the academic part. And then we have a lot of sports fields that we have to be managing. Managing, uh, We have like two soccer fields. We have a golf court. We have a paintball court. Uh, and recently we opened this e-sports club. Uh, I mean, we have um, a chess club, uh, a gymnasium. Uh, well, a lot of areas that we have to we have to be managing, and it has and and it's challenging because. I mean, when you learn it from, from the academic part, uh, it's, not, it's very different when you are in the field. I mean, yeah. taking decisions on how to rebuild a, a football field, uh, how to be managing the paintball uh, when it comes to equipment, uh, yeah. everything that has to do do it. And I, and I think that that is very challenging when you learn it on, only from the academic part, but when you are in the field, it, it's very different. And we're working, I mean, we're working in a very big project. Um, maybe in some of the questions that you have later, I'll, I'll answer it with, in depth. But we're building and I think it's going to be ready very, very soon. We, are, we created, uh, well, I created myself with the help of my team. I created the first uh, sport management a master's degree in South America. It's going to be the first one with that uh, with that name, sports management, the way it has to be, you know, and it's going to be online to be able to attain all the necessities in locally and, and I would say regionally. So uh, we're been working in a lot of projects. Um, also, the things that we have to do in our daily basis are sports events. Everything has been changing right now because of the, um, because of the pandemic. It was a very a big challenge on how to, to take sports from its nature to be on the field to to take it online so that's that was a very big challenge challenge as a, a sports ma manager and how to take that from its nature to a virtual a scenario yeah so let's let's take it this way you get to work in the morning what do you do a typical morning what do you do all the way till you close from work well, I think I'm a, I'm a different kind of leader. I, I try to say yeah. myself I'm not a boss because I try to teach uh, not only things about about sports. I try to teach my my people, my staff, uh, things about life. I mean, values, things that sport give, gives to you, like how to do things well. And I'm not the typical boss that is like, okay, let's start seven o'clock, meeting every everyone, meeting at seven o'clock. We close up at five with another meeting. I try to give people the tools so they can be out of I don't I don't I don't know the word, but how they can be sustainable from the, from themselves. I mean, yeah. they know what to do. I try to check on them on how they are running. I try to guide them. So I basically basically work by objectives. I mean, it's not like hey, what are you doing right now? So people know what they have to do on, on their week. And they know they had to do it. And I think that has been like the easiest way to, 
to run up up my 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 days. But basically, I start my mornings. I check up everything that 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 I have on my agenda, and that agenda is nothing that I've been writing on a on a, on a piece of paper. I try to keep it up here on my on my head, and I try to. Um, take actions in everything in that moment. I don't try to postpone it. I try to take the actions in that moment when things happen. Yeah, but um, uh, that many people have noticed that sport directors of sports or sports managers do get a lot of investors and a lot of um, papers coming in. Now, how, how do you manage administratively when you have so many visitors coming in and as well as um, administrative duties how do you go around this? That's something that I try to like say to everyone. Like people get this misunderstanding that the sport managers have to be different from a normal manager. I mean, sport managers do things different when it comes to sports on the management of the sport. But when it comes to administrative uh, stuff, like normal daily stuff, you have to be doing the same thing that another another director of any other area has to be doing. And that thing of, of, of how to manage, it comes to the basics of management itself. I think the, the first thing that you have to be is a, a, they have a lot of human sense on how to treat people, how to deal with things. I mean, uh, I try to be flexible, but I try to be fair. So you don't know what you're going to be dealing with every day. Sometimes you have different problems, different things that you have to be facing every day. And it's not like uh, something that is a schedule, but in terms of management and administration, um, you just have to be, you you have to know the basics on, on how to deal things, on how to plan, on how to do planning, how, how, how to work, how to, how to organize, uh, I think a leader has to has to have that, like um, uh, know how to manage your team, your people, how to how to interact, how to have a proper body language in everything that you do on on, on your on your day. So I think that there are the things that I will like I would say to people that are listening to this. Yeah, well, I know the investor setting has a different uh, way of recruitment, but um, if you are in charge of recruitment. Um, what do you look out for your staff um, to work with? When it comes to recruit? Yeah, in terms of recruitment. Um, but if you, are not, if you are not directly in charge of recruitment, as, as, as a director of sports, what do you look out for uh, for well, people you want to work as, with? You? Yeah, I, I had, I, I also, I, well, I have to recruit people for some times when okay. we open new sport or everything. Yeah. I, I I don't always look at how much a people has been doing on their CV because that's something that, I mean, it's, it's very important to know the experience of, of someone or, or what he has been doing in the past. But I think it has to do more with the, um, with the attitude of, of who are you recruiting? Because I think one of the, one of my mission is also to teach, to educate, to, people can learn from a new experience. So I try to see if that people, if that person has the attitude, has the core values that I need in my organization, because at some point he's going to be, he's going to learn all the technical parts. So that's something that I really take in in account when it comes to recruitment. Okay. And uh, you spoke about facility management. Um, How does that play? Um, looking at your background from water ski, and now you're managing a multi-purpose sporting facilities. Uh, how do you do this? Do you get technical people on board, or you kind of like it's something you find a way to do it? Um, I, I would like to know more. Yeah, it's not that complicated. I mean, it's very complicated on, uh, when you are in that situation. But how to manage how to manage it is very easy because it's impossible as sport, as a sport manager to know exactly what, for example, a, a, a soccer field requires. I mean, you don't know. You are not you are not a person that is study uh, like greenkeeping or you you don't know exactly how the field works, the grass works because you need to study agronomy or or many other things. Yeah. 
as the sport management, when it comes to facilities, you need to understand what are the basic requirements on, on I mean, I try to find myself in a position like, for example, I see my, my football field that is it's not in the perfect conditions. I try to first look for a, a technical provider, a supplier that knows, a, a technical person that knows how to work in a specific sport fields. And I manage it the way I want it to be like, okay, the football field has to be in perfect conditions. I check how much he's going to charge me for that job. Uh, I try to see if he's going to, if, if he's going to do it in the time that I want. So as a sport man manager, you're not going to learn on how every facility of every sport is going to work very technically. But it, when it comes on what is your, you need to find people, the suppliers that know in detail what they're going to do. I hope I'm trying to explain myself. Yeah. <laughs> but you need to manage Exactly. I mean, if you have a problem with the, the gymnasium, you need to find a, per, a, a good supplier knowing that it has the quality standards on how to fix the machines, on what are the needs. And you're going to be learning from each area, from each sport field. So your duty is to, to, to deliver the facility in perfect conditions. No matter what, you need to deliver in perfect conditions. So that's how I try to manage uh, facilities like that. Yep, and then the uh, last but not least, then uh, with regards to what you do, um, how about the organizing of events? I'm um, given the complex nature of the university setting, with um, blending of students and uh, faculty members. Um, how do you organize events? What type of events do you organize for them, and how often do you do these events? Yeah, well, when we were at the university in a, uh, before the pandemic, we organized a lot. We are, we used to organize a lot of sport events, specifically the ones that the sports that we have in our university, like golf, like football, like basketball, like volley. Um, it's not that hard because I have my professors that are the technical ones that know exactly what every sport needs. But when it comes to events, it's very important that you're, you are very organized. Like, I mean, okay, we're going to be doing a, a golf event. Okay, let's sit down. Let's organize it the proper way. Let's make a very good schedule. Uh, uh, ass assign duties to, to, to your staff. Like, I mean, you're going to do this. You're going to do that. Uh, we're going to do it in this, in this moment, in this time. We're going to be needing these, these, and these. So, that's the, the best thing that you can do when it comes to events. And also not try to do something that you're not be able to achieve. Like if I'm going to be doing a golf event, I'm not going to try to put uh, things that are, that are uh, mostly dreams. But I try to be very like logical and say, this is our reach and this is what we can do. And not try to offer things that we're not going to be able to give back to people. So yeah. I try to make it very, very simple, very good, very organized. Uh, try to find prizes for the winners, uh, sometimes with uh, sponsors. Um, but I think so far it has been very good. Right now that we are in the pandemic, yeah. it's been very challenged because we've been uh, doing more of, of events of sports that are able to be on the online a scenario, let's say uh, e-sports, chess, chess, chess is a sport that has been that has been benefited because of the pandemic, and other events, it has been a, a little bit of difficult. But when we're going to be back in in the normal daily after the pandemic, uh, we will try to make as much as events as possible. Because when when you are at the university, these type these types of events needs to be for people that it's a space for relax, a space of recreation. It's a space for students to join and get a little bit of a read of their academic daily basis. Well, I mean, and then that goes to the next question. Um, given this array of duties that you have to do in different sections, as well as finding ways for students to relax, and as well as the um, the faculty members to also relax and have some fun through sports. My next question is, how then do you also rest? How do you manage rest? How do you 
manage your break times because in the process of trying to make people relax and rest, you are very busy. How do you do that? Well, that's a, that's a very good question. <laughs> I don't rest. Uh, since I got to university, I've been working like full time. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, it's something that I like so much that it doesn't become like something at that point that I say I need to rest. Of course, like a normal people, there are periods when you need to, to go rest. But um, I, I would say some, I, I took like, like these break periods that we have on the university are mainly at Christmas, Christmas time, New Year's time. Um, but, but I try to say, say myself, there's no, there's no need to rest right now because we need, we need, we need to deliver, deliver, deliver yeah. as we can. Yeah. But it's also, it's also important for us to have that rest. Uh, otherwise we might break down in the process of getting other people to rest and relax. That's true. <laughs> that, that's, that's very true. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you. Sometimes you need like I don't I don't rest myself, but I give break periods of let's say I don't do like if I have like I, I don't try to do as much as EA Sports tournament every month because I yeah. know people are gonna get with so much of that. So I try to make it like every three months or every four yeah. months people can engage themselves again because I think you need to give that space between each yeah. event. I would say. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, I mean, I've, 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 um, what I take from what you've said so far is you organize various games, which ranges from um, the golf, the um, e-sports games, uh, the chess, uh, critical thinking games, in a way to stimulate uh, both students and, and the faculty members um, in a very relaxing and fun moment, which is fantastic um, as the director of sports. Now, um, we'll be wrapping up soon, but um, what are some of the achievements uh, you have um, chalked um, or successes you have chalked, rather, um, if somebody may ask you since you're... Well, the first thing that I did when I came back, well, so sorry, when I came back from Korea and I got to be working in the university, the first thing that I did, that I, that I do is like, to clean up the house. I mean, in, in good terms, like cleaning up the house and saying, okay, let's try to make it professional the way we work. I mean, there were many events, many sports that were not being managed uh, in, a, in a professional way. Uh, some of the events that we had, they didn't even have like, for example, a rule book, uh, like, uh, like the football, like the football event that we do it every year. We didn't have a, like a rule book on say, these are the, the terms, these are, these are the rules of the events. Uh, I tried to organize it, the classes, the C-levels. I mean, professionalizing every, every aspect of sports. I would say that was the biggest achievement when I started to make it everything very professional in every sport, in the way we were managing the, the facilities, the events, the students, that was the biggest challenge, like to set up the house in a, in a proper way. And I would say right now, and that's gonna be the biggest achievement is gonna be right now that we're gonna be starting the master's degree that I told you that it was gonna be, it's gonna be the first one in, in South America, mm -hmm. uh, as sport management itself as a master's degree. Uh, it's going to be running, I think, very soon. In I mean, uh, we're going to be starting to make the marketing, the promotion of the master itself to run in, in January uh, 2022. So I would say that if, if it works the way I want it, that will be the biggest achievement so far. Yeah, I think that's um, fantastic, well explained. Um, but people also say that change is difficult. You've taken this position, I think, in 2018, I guess. How was it for the old staff to manage this change that you brought? Uh, as good word as it is, it's difficult for some people to experience change, I guess. Yeah, it's very difficult. I think it's not. it was not difficult for me, but it was difficult for them to change up their mindset on how to how to um, like 
in the way I see things, in, the, in my vision on how yeah. I try to see things on how I work things, try to tell them or try to make them work the way I want. And that was like yeah. the most challenging way on taking them from their safe spot, safe uh, scenario, like they, like they say, their safe box, trying to take them out and saying, okay. Yeah, comfortable, probably. Yeah, the comfortable zone. Yeah. And saying we're gonna be working this way, we're gonna be working another another way of management, and it's 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 kind of difficult because you have many different like my staff. Some of them are younger than me. Some of them are older than me. Some of them come from a different uh, education, um, different areas. So try to manage. I mean, you you can't manage manage them. Everyone the same way yeah. everyone needs not a special treatment but you need to deal with them in, in in a proper way so you can have all your stuff working in the same direction that's yeah. kind of the most challenging part yeah are there are there any more challenge that you would want to talk about um well i would say that we have sometimes challenges challenges when it comes to to things that are happening in Ecuador when it comes to economic crisis that we're dealing uh, with sometimes with bureaucracy that is a, a sometimes internal and external, um, but that's a, everywhere, you know? Yeah. And I say to my staff and to my people, be grateful that you have problems and challenges every day. Otherwise, otherwise life would be so boring if you don't have challenges or, or problems every day. So. I try to take challenges in, a, in, in the most positive way possible, but be, because you're gonna have them every day and you don't know what next problem or challenge, challenge you're gonna have next week. So you cannot be being worried about it, so just flow with it. Yeah, the, the final question is this, but in the work of the sports manager or director of sports, be it in the university, in the team, in, football in other sports in stu- um, teams or clubs it's not too different and uh, now the question is what's your advice to aspiring young people who wants to become sports manager and um, if you're given the chance to advise a young of pe- a young man young people well my first advice would be like stop believing that sport managers are different from managers of any other area I mean, of course, sports is managed in a different way, but when it comes to be a manager itself, you need to be learning the basic basics of administration, of management, of body language, of, of tools that are that are basic. So I would say to to young people like, I mean, okay, you want to be a sport manage, manager. First thing that you you have to notice that is not go, when if you're in a managerial position or of the, if you're gonna be working in a club or you'll be working anywhere in sports, you're gonna be dealing with basic stuff that deals everyone around the world. Like if I have to write a letter, doesn't matter if I'm a sport manager or uh, I, I don't know an architect. You need to be have a good uh, or, or a grammatical writing. You need to be doing things well, dealing with people in a in, in a proper way. Then you can be applying the, the, the technical parts of sports. But but it, but if you want to be a become a sport manager, you have to be a, first a manager and then a sport manager. So that's something that young people have to understand because sometimes they say, okay, I'm going to be sport manager. It's cool. I, I'm going to be doing things the other way. And it's not like that. Well, on that note, thank you so much um, for the time all the way from Ecuador um, to grace this discussion and also to educate young people aspiring to be um, sports management and uh, sports managers or directors of sports. Um, I hope this discussion has been um, beneficial, a learning experience for those who are wondering and thinking. Um, Martin has been a friend to me. He was a mate to me. He was a mate at Korea when we were in the Seoul National University. And I'm so glad to see him climb up to become the director of sports in the Ecuadorian University. So on that note, I want to say thank you for your time. And hopefully we get to meet um, in the near future or possibly discuss 
and new things or modern ways of sport management and marketing. Thank you so well, much, Martin. <laughs> very, thank you. Thank you again. Uh, like you said, like we were mates back then in Korea, we're still mates. And I open for you the doors anytime uh, for anything, any project that you're dealing. I'm very happy for you for what are you doing for uh, doing something that is very difficult to is like to educate, to guide. Yeah. And that's that's a really beautiful challenge that you have. And um, saying hi to everyone. Thank you again. I'll, I'll see you in the next occasion. Thank Most you. definitely. Take care, my friend.